At Total Pharmacy Care, we fill your prescriptions and answer any questions about your medications. No distractions and no long lines. Tell your doctor to send your prescriptions to Total Pharmacy Care. Welcome back to another episode of Unwired Appalachia, a podcast that a you should podcast. listen to. A <laughs> uh, it is a podcast. Brought to you by the Appalachian newspapers, and uh, this is season two, episode 22. I'm staying right where I was last time. Shout out to Tayshaun Prince with the Pistons. I got one for you. Local legend, Elisha Justice at Louisville, the Bullet, 22. I actually do like that one. That's I've got bad. Clyde Drexler. We yeah, don't pull out enough local people. We no, should we don't. go with we, some local yeah, numbers. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like where you're headed with yeah. that. Thank you again for joining us for uh, Season 2, Episode 22. I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsors. First off, it's flu season. Didn't know if you knew that. It is. It, it is, is flu, flu season. season. He, he had the flu last week. I th- and what's what crazy happened? is I had gotten my flu shots. <laughs> he got the wrong one. I mean, clearly. But you can still get the flu. Anyway, it's flu <laughs> season. And the professional pharmacists at Nova Pharmacy and Caremore Pharmacy want you to get vaccinated. So call Joel or Sandy Thornberry today and get vaccinated and stay healthy. Nova Pharmacy is 606-432-2274 or Caremore Pharmacy at 606-639-2273. We're also brought to you by Bruce Walters. Bruce Walters has just updated the pricing on all their new inventory. Check them out at BruceWaltersFord.net. If you are looking for quality care for your loved ones, look no further than Presbyterian Homes of Cedar Creek and Good Shepherd at Phelps. Both facilities treat your loved ones with care and respect. They offer therapy, daily activities, exquisite cuisine, and home-like settings to make your family members feel at home. Call to schedule an appointment today at Cedar Creek. Call Jessica Thacker at 432 432- 8243 and at Good Shepherd call 456-8725. Caring for your loved ones is what we do best. I mean, what a job. Serious, he was on point today. Yeah, he was and didn't all business, right just business. I didn't say Trevor's wife. He didn't say Trevor's wife. Oh my, wife. Oh my goodness. Say, he's in his own head on this. So one. take that clap away. And, yeah. Just, just a terrible job. Good guys. rhythm, though. With the, with <laughs> I'm the, so with sorry, the Jessica. I'm so Very sorry. Very good <laughs> rhythm with the ad read. As you can see, I'm joined. I, I feel like I got away from introducing everybody. I don't know how that uh, happened. Anyway, happens. joined, as always, by regional sports editor. I got that locked. Oh, I mean, we don't even lot. have to talk about it anymore. Credit to me for memorizing <laughs> it. Regional sports editor, Randy White. Sports writer, staff sports writer, covering the Mingo uh, County. Uh, just all sports. I mean, this guy's all over the place. You never know what you might little run bit into of this. County stuff too. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. He's all over. He's right everywhere. Josh I'm, I'm a journeyman. <laughs> the human Swiss Army knife, Corey Vance behind the camera making it. I not, mean, what not, about the camera angles? Not one week? camera this week. Not two this week. Three this week. Three cameras. Stepping it up. Yeah. Sounding like LeBron. And it's tough to, to make us look good. I, it is tough to make it's us look good. It's not easy. It's an it's not an easy job. Corey Vance making it happen behind the camera. And uh, we'll jump right into, uh, first off, we, I mean, I guess we have to start by saying the biggest news, mm-hmm. you know, kind of dominated the news cycle ever since yesterday. Obviously, the passing away of Kobe Bryant uh, in a tragic helicopter accident with his daughter and some other families going to uh, what seemed like it was a basketball game. Yeah, I think But was, for yeah. years, you always heard, you know, this is how Kobe got around L.A. Yeah, that's what was it was. He took – helicopters yeah. to and from games and you know if you've got that you know if you have the means that kobe bryant had mm-hmm. great idea um you know just tragic and, and, and a legend yeah just a legend he's, he's one of the greats of all time i mean you know you think of kobe bryant you think of clutch you think of championships you think of him and Shaq in those early years uh, and, and you know they they went a long way to you know reform the lakers i mm-hmm. mean the lakers were a staple of the 80s until Shaq and Kobe got there, you know, from the late 80s to the 90s, they were kind of, you know, they were a good team and they were in the in the mix and stuff, but they were never serious contenders until Kobe and Shaq got there. So just a winner. Uh, I don't know what else you can say about the guy. I mean, he, he's the closest thing is to Michael Jordan. Yeah, for I think. sure. That's what I was going to say. And, yeah. I mean, to me, man, he was just somebody that had always been there. Like, And when I first heard the news, it was something that I really didn't want to believe. Like, I kind of thought it was just a joke. Uh, like a cruel joke and and then when i found out it was real the next thing i thought was dear god don't let his daughter be with him because they go everywhere Mm -hmm. together and then you find out that horrible news and i mean man 
I I really I don't have words to just like. Well, and it's a guy that you know is in the discussion for one of the greatest of mm-hmm. all time. Like you said, I would say coming right off the well, he and Jordan overlapped. They Jordan overlapped, was still yeah. playing. Uh, a guy whose game, just all around game, was as closest to Jordan's yeah. as we've seen. Very similar in his the way he took jump mm-hmm. shots. Just the way he could handle the ball, it was a dog on mm-hmm. defense. Probably didn't get enough credit for talked, being. He talked. Yeah, he I mean, talked. he was. He was. You know, he he he's the closest that we'll see style wise as Jordan. Yeah. I think you know you, you hear the all time great speak. Now you hear LeBron versus Jordan. Who's the greatest? I think the better discussion is who's the better between Kobe and LeBron. I think that was a a, a much closer gap than Jordan and the rest. But I mean, still to be one of those. Upper echelon players of all time. Yeah, I mean, and, and just think of the guys he played against all the time: the Tim Duncan's, mm-hmm. the Kevin Garnett's, and that era. That Western Conference that Western was just Conference. loaded. Yeah, back loaded. I mean, so. yeah. and you know, Kobe did it with you know Shaq early on, and those teams, and then you know, kind of revamped it back with in the 09, Al 10, teams, and and Yeah, Mar- Mar- yeah. Mar- won five titles. I yeah, mean, you know, titles. that that's hard to do. I mean, three of them was Shaq, and you know, at that point, Shaq was dominant. But then it got to the Shaq or Kobe. Yeah. Who would you like better on the team? You know, I was always of the feeling that I'd rather have the Kobe type because Shaq didn't play as many regular season games. But I mean, those two were dominant forces yeah. together. Well, and you know, I was never a huge Kobe guy. I was always big on his game. Always loved watching him. But I was never like mm-hmm. a huge Kobe guy. But I mean, you just can't take away the guy who was in the ultimate competitor, oh, and was just a dog on both sides of the ball out there, and was going to end up being at the end of this year eligible for the Hall mm-hmm. of Fame for sure, a first ballot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's not like, even that's without a doubt. Yeah, that's yeah, not and, even. A you question. know, to see these teams now to go ahead and you know retire his number like Dallas, and you know, I, I don't know if that's that's a great gesture. I don't know if it's warranted for Dallas, but. You know, very cool stuff. I mean, it's great to see the league honor guy. Yeah, I mean, they're going to pay their respects. I mean, such a uh, transcendent athlete. Um, well, and we we did kind of get to see some teams take 24 second violations to start yeah. off the game to honor 24. Trey Young wore number eight to start the game mm-hmm. to honor him, and then took an eight second violation. And I mean, to me, man, Kobe was like one of those transitional players, like that bridge the gap for at least my generation, you know what I mean, from mm-hmm. Michael to LeBron. And and then that's three back-to-back players that are all in the greatest of all time discussion. Yeah, um, and I think he's in that in the same breath as Michael and LeBron. Yeah, for I mean. sure. For sure. I mean, he's one of the greatest basketball players we've ever seen. And we're just lucky enough to have grown up in a generation where basketball really evolved mm-hmm. into, you know, and it's still evolving. It's still changing. But, yeah. you know, we've seen – three of probably the greatest players of all time yep. in Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and now coming in to guys like Luca, Luca. Uh, mm-hmm. who's just yep. unbelievable. So rest in peace to uh, Kobe Bryant. Definitely a, uh, a huge tragedy. But uh, there's no easy way to transition straight no. into any other topic, so we'll just jump straight in. The All-A Tournament obviously going on down yeah, it just EKU's wrapped up. EKU's campus, just, yeah. you were down there for some of that. And uh, the Shelby Valley girls, we'll start off with them. Yeah, we, it just wrapped up yesterday, boys and girls. Uh, Shelby Valley girls, they, they won their first game. Uh, uh, they play, played really well for, uh, that Wednesday night. They won by uh, 64 to 30, I think. So they won by 34. Alyssa Ellsworth just put on a show. They come back, and, you know, a Walton Verona team who goes all the way to the championship, that's who Shelby Valley loses to. And you know they, I thought they were the better team. Yeah. They just couldn't get shots to fall. Some days, some days the ball just don't want to go in the basket. Again, uh, you know Shelby Valley had a, a, Alyssa L, a Newsom. She hit some big threes to get them back in that game. Just a great showing for them. Uh, Casty Rowe uh, is back and she got to play on that big stage. And so you know. Shelby Valley had a great show in the in the all eye. And we 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 I, mean, I, I don't even I just, know how I to just ignore that. <laughs> I just John. ignored Josh Kessler if that's possible. Yeah, but that's I don't even know how to ignore I, that. I just did it. I don't <laughs> know. I had to look away the whole time because I saw him start laughing and I was well, like, I, I didn't even want to look. I knew something terrible was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I was right. Yeah. Just uh And then you know you come back and you have Paintsville and, and Hazard. They meet in that second round. Hazard gets the win. Both those teams are very similar. Kobe Fugit put on another show. That kid is unbelievable. Yeah, Nick Nick Keaton is a double double machine. Paceville's going to be in this thing in the 15th region at oh, the end. Oh, for sure. Hazard's going to be in the mix for that 14th region. Uh, 
you know, they, they get beat on Saturday night by St. Henry's, who they led most of that game, and then St. Henry's had to have a, a big second, second half, half yeah. to pull that out. So, you know, Hazard was right in there, great showing for all of our local teams, great stage, great tournament. I mean, you know, we had Marty Casey down there. You have a bunch of local guys. Love the Mardog. Uh, you got a shout-out to Tyrone Fields out there, one of the refs, uh, Mike Call, Ancy Casey, he, who, who's big involved in mm-hmm. the L.A. I mean, a lot of local people have a lot to do with that. So, shout out to everybody having anything to do with that all A. Just a phenomenal tournament. And then, you know, I'll just take my transition and throw it right to Josh. Mingo County, 13 threes from a girl the other night. Scarlett Thomason, yeah. Uh, wow. Dude, she had 10 in the first half. And then comes out and then uh, Mingo got up on a, on a big lead. And uh, Coach Kim Smith – or Davis Smith, let me get that right, Mm because we just looked this up because I couldn't figure out (laughs) which was first. Mm -hmm. But uh, she she left her in in pursuit of this, you know, record, and she ends up getting 13, which breaks, I think, a Cardinal Conference record and a state record for most threes in a single game. And what's interesting to me is when you saw her – like moving without the ball and the the sets they were running for her. And – the fact that she did not have to dribble the ball in pursuit of 40-some points. I think it was 42 is what she ended up with. But Jesus Christ, man. It was well, insane. I mean, and we it had another insane. girl, Jerrica Thacker, recently scored 60-some. She comes back that same night, Friday night, against Phelps and hits 11 more threes, but Phelps wins the game. So we've got a lot of girls out here. Knocking down threes, playing well, putting up big numbers. I mean, oh, just man. crazy stuff. And I think, on. Randy, I, I've said this a couple times to you this season. Like, I've been super impressed over the past year with, like, girls' athletics and, and the leaps that they've taken as far as, like, skill-wise. Mm-hmm. Now, I know the athleticism compared to, you know, men's athletics is a little bit well, it's different. It's just two different. But yeah, it's two yeah, different yeah. types of athleticism. Yeah. But when you watch some of these girls with their ball handling skills, dude, and the way that they shoot, like – it is absolutely insane. Like, I know uh, Katie Ball's on a roll right now. Mm-hmm. Zy Rhodes is, is absolutely killing it in Mingo County. Uh, Kaylee Baisden is on a scoring rampage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you got Michaela Mays. She's averaging like a crazy double double. Like, I, man, I'm just super impressed. And I mean, it, it, like, I enjoy going to girls' basketball games and. It, I mean, I know the guys, they've been killing it too. So, well, we're shaping up for a good time here on yeah. this court coming up in, in just a few weeks. A couple weeks, yeah. Uh, the end of February. Yeah. tournament After coming we get up. the districts it's going on, here. it's going to be here, boys and girls. Always fun, man. Speaking of something coming up, going on wrestling. here, uh, this weekend is the uh, state, wrestling state wrestling tournament. For the middle school kids. First I'll time, yeah. the uh, first time being here in eastern Kentucky, mm-hmm. as far as I know, definitely a first for the uh, Appalachian Wireless Arena, and we're gearing up for a lot of folks to be in town. Yeah, for yeah this. you're going to have a busy weekend with yeah. that. Around 1,400 kids expected to be here. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, bro, you're going to have your hands full. I'm not sure if high schools are going to be involved in no, this. No, it's but up to no, it's just you. Uh, it's you at the yeah, middle yeah. school. Uh, but I know the, the Pike Central Warhawks, a, lo- a local team, yeah. their, their feeder school – are on the national level, and they're going to be one of the, the teams to come out. Come out and watch these kids. I mean, yeah. they're putting a lot of work in. I mean, you know, wrestling doesn't get as much hype as people, but these kids still put in the work. I mean, it's going to be fun. If you've never been to a wrestling tournament, there will be mats set up all over this yeah. place. There will be, there'll be all kinds well, of and, fun and I'll, stuff I'll going tell on. you what, man. If you're one of those people that sit back and you think that physicality is becoming a thing of the past in sports around here, go watch one of these wrestling meets and, and then – and then try to have that conversation with somebody. Try to have that conversation with one of those parents there because I'll go ahead and tell you, man, that's some of the, like, I've seen some of the strongest kids in the county show up to these these mm-hmm. things. And it, they're just physically, they're so gifted with, like, body awareness, like knowing where they're at at all times, like, and knowing that they can maybe reach for, like, an ankle or a leg or well, something. Well, it's all about and, leverage, and if you see coaches like, Jim Matney at Johnson Central, he wants his guys to wrestle because they learn that, you know, th- those techniques for leverage, uh, especially Pike, up front. Pikeville does that too. So, they, uh, Coach McNamee works really well with Coach Holland over mm-hmm. there. And they have, like, probably one of the better working relationships, I would think, in the in the county. Uh, and then I know, uh, well, we was talking about the Warhawks. Uh Coach Maynard there, mm-hmm. uh, they call him Biscuit. 
Yeah, <laughs> he's doing a phenomenal job there, man. I think he spends northwards of 18 hours a week with yeah. these kids. So, and they're I a mean, nationally ranked team, and that's because they're putting the work in. Yeah, and for all the MMA fans out there, anybody that uh, enjoys that kind of thing, most people who know the sport will tell you wrestling is as huge. good a base for MMA as anything. Well, I mean, as you got to yeah, to be able to transition from all those guards and everything. And just knowing how to control another person mm-hmm. physically. Right. I mean, right. so come out to the Appalachian Wireless Arena, see something that's not readily, if you're a sports fan, you don't get to see a whole lot of wrestling no, in don't. the area. Listen, it's going to be going on Saturday and Sunday this week. I think weigh-ins and stuff like that start on Mm -hmm. Friday. So come out and check it out. And then this week, uh, unfortunately, with the – well, not unfortunately. I mean, it's a good thing there's wrestling tournaments in town. But that means the uh, UPOC men's team, and I guess women's team, I don't know if women's play or not. It would be men's women's doubleheader. Big rivalry, the biggest rivalry probably in basketball that uh, the UPOC men have. Georgetown Tigers coming in town, nationally ranked Georgetown Tigers – Coming in, they're going to play at UPOC's gym on yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. And uh, listen, Kelly Wells' team, we've talked about them earlier this year, had a lot of depth, really talented, really athletic team. Now he's had to deal with a little bit of adversity with mm-hmm. some injuries and stuff coming like that up. Got a big test this weekend. Yeah, they got, they got back on the – after losing four in a row, they yeah. got back on the win, winning streak. well, back in the win column uh, Saturday against Carver. Uh, Georgetown is going – like, if you've never seen Pifle, you pike in Georgetown at the old gym, go over there. It's going to be fun. It's going to be loud. There's going to be – It's definitely going to be It's going to be packed. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is an what atmosphere. Is it's, it's going to uh, – the women will tip it two men at four. So, come to the wrestling. Go to the u I mean, back and forth if you want. But that is a game to watch. I mean, u pike they, they owe Georgetown one. That was the first team, yeah. I think, who got them in the loss column. Yeah. And then – Injuries unfolded and things like that for you, Pikes. It was one and two at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. You, Pikes, kind of falling off a little bit, but I mean, I don't don't expect you, Pikes, to let Georgetown come in here and just no. walk over. Kelly over. Wells going to have something for Georgetown this weekend, especially trying to defend the home turf. You and, know they're going to, and the gym's going to be crazy. And, and the first time I've ever seen when I my, me covering you, Pikes, was back in the day. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the name, but shout out to Josh uh, Scotty Samarco. Dropped 44 on you on Georgetown one night at the old U Pike gym. The first time U Pike beat Georgetown. Uh, shout out to Josh Samarco if, if he's watching this. Josh Samarco, uh, yeah, right. the dude could shoot the ball. He's from yeah. Michigan. Great guy, great guy. Uh, he played a little uh, pro uh, for uh, the minors, I believe. After that, in the energy, oh, okay. so oh, okay. the guy can shoot it. I got uh, to watch just, them. Just a great guy. <laughs> Uh, But, I mean, it's going to be a fun game. Well, and and I guess sticking with college basketball, Mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky Wildcats coming off a game Saturday night, which is going to be – I mean, it's going to prove at the end of the year when it comes tournament selection time, going to be a huge win. That was a huge win. They needed that and found a way to win. When it went to overtime, we didn't know what to expect. I didn't think I was going to be able to watch the overtime. I mean, I – the, the last few minutes of that game, it was it was, and we don't want to blame anything on the refs, but the the, the officiating in that game, there was some one sided calls, unbelievably bad. There was some one sided, yeah, calls. it was terrible down the stretch. Uh, but you know, they found a way to win though. I mean, and good teams find a way to win on the road, on the road, and and you got to give credit to Nick Richards. Yeah, you know That's this why kid has have an upperclassman. This kid has changed his game more than anybody in the country. I, I don't know if college gives out the most improved player award like the NBA does, but they should. They should give it to Nick Richards. Yeah, he he was just unbelievable on Saturday night. It was really Johnny on the spot rebounds, oh, playing some good defense. The one goaltending call down the stretch after I rewatched it, but I, I was absolutely at the just, time it did not. At look the time like it didn't look like goaltending. After I've seen a few replays, mm-hmm. probably did hit the backboard probably. first. Still a great play, and I wanted it bad that no, night. When it happened, I wanted it bad. Nick Rich or Nick Richards, 25 points, 14 rebounds that night. Emmanuel quickly, 21.6 rebounds. And, you know, those were our only two players in double figures. Sestina, uh, eight points. We, we need more rebounds from Sestina. You know, my one, my one take on Sestina, I like what he does with the shooting. I mm-hmm. like how he sets screens. But he's got to be stronger with the ball. I mean, you know, that's one of the things that I, I've kind of noticed about it. At times, he's lackadaisical with the ball. He's, yeah. he's not strong with it. And he'll lose it when he shouldn't. Well, uh, 
But, I mean, that's one thing. That's, that's one small gripe. But, I mean, you know, he, he's got to get better with that. Well, and I think to elaborate on what you just said, in a Cal Perry offense and that dribble drive offense, it's all about being aggressive when you get the ball and getting people to kind of collapse in that lane and opening up shots for those shooters well, outside. Well, to, for that that offense to be the it's most effective, you got to have guys like Tyrone Maxey who can get to the basket and score and get fouls. When nobody's scoring and they don't really have a direction yeah. to go, it's hard to watch the offense sometimes. Yeah, and if you would have told me on – when we were recording this last week, if you would have told me that Kentucky went to Lubbock and got a win, Tyrese Maxey only mm-hmm. had seven points, I would have probably told you you thought you were crazy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Emmanuel quickly, just the, turn, the, the improvement that he's made and Nick Richards has made, mm-hmm. you know, has been – What's been carried, and, and then Ashton Hagens had a couple of big reach ins, huge play in, in at the end of the game. The, that, the, the the play he knocked it away. I can't remember twenty five's name yeah. on Texas Tech. Moretti, yeah, Moretti, yeah, and I hate that kid. That is, hate that kid. Moretti twenty five, yeah. Was he the one that walked with it from yeah. half court? I mean, I probably shouldn't Pulled say. Hey, <laughs> speaking of guys, that I just cannot stand. And we were – this we, was killing us we, at we the end of that game. That guy. Yeah. E.J. Montgomery oh my God. on the floor. Why he was in there in those situations, I have no idea because he didn't add anything. I will say he did get in somebody's way and get a rebound in that yeah. overtime session. But, I mean, he doesn't bring a lot to the well, – Listen, to somebody the else got to get on the boards. These big men. Sestina, only three rebounds the whole game. E.J. Montgomery played 25 minutes, man. What are you doing out there? If you're only getting five rebounds, you only have four points. Nick Richards is the only guy on the boards. I, I, something's wrong. I mean, you're right. I mean, if he's not rebounding, what's his point? Because he's not scoring either. Yeah, I mean, you got Emmanuel have some kind quickly of out rebounded EJ Montgomery. That should never happen. Yeah, you ever had a guard out ever. rebounding. Uh, basically, our power forward, even though he's mm-hmm. definitely not a power. I don't know what he is. Uh, he's, he's, he's not just, a four. He's not a five. He's just EJ Montgomery. He's at this just EJ Montgomery. I mean, we, we hope to see him turn around. Nobody's rooting harder for EJ Montgomery. Hey, than we, I am. we hope that he has a Nick Richards improvement yes. at some point. But uh, right now, uh, I just I hate to see him out there. It is tough. Give me Sestina it's, all it's day a, over him. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a hard time. Pain. And then since we didn't get to hear from this guy last week, we'll touch a little bit on. Are we even allowed to say the Super Bowl? Because I noticed a I lot of places know. say the big game. What's I that don't know. all about? I don't know. I, I don't think the NFL is going to come after us. They might not. They might. It's Roger the, Goodell. It's the NFL. Today, Roger so Goodell is, we, is. We know Roger Goodell is as petty. You know what? <laughs> we can call it the Super Bowl. It's okay. You're Goodell. not, you're not going to get you, fired. You can call it the Super Duper Bowl. <laughs> the Super Duper Bowl. The big game. But anyway, coming up this weekend, this Sunday, um, you know, Randy and I discussed it a little bit last week. I think we both liked the Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, by the time the game kicks off, I haven't seen how the lines move right now. I would it assume it's going to be a toss yeah, up. It be it's going to be a pick 'em. Josh Blankenship, go ahead and give us your pick for uh, the Super Bowl. I mean, I, you know, we're we're on the Chiefs. I, I, I told him. And, and look into one of these three cameras and say it with emphasis. Also, I, <laughs> I, I feel like last week I, I came off like I was just hedging my bets a little bit because I was like I picked the Chiefs, but. My gut's telling me the Niners are going to win. I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm just telling you. My gut has you-know-what for brains. Most no. of the time. I'll tell you what, man. I, I'm i going to take the Chiefs. And I, <laughs> I, I just like it. I'm, I'm going to take the Chiefs because I, I trust Patrick Mahomes. I trust that offense. I think the defense will play just good enough to, you know, get the ball back when they need to. Like, I, I just don't think they'll have to – Overexert themselves, I guess. I'd like, love to see somebody just throw Andy Reid up on their shoulders, that would be carry great. him and, off and the, the field. Right. My, my only thing is, is like Richard Sherman can't guard everybody. You can't get him to guard everybody. Well, Richard Sherman, here's the thing: Richard Sherman's uh, he's a he's a zone corner. He's not yeah. he's not much yeah. of a man to man guy. No, right? he, 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 he he's, he's a great a, corner. Back in, not, nothing against back Richard in Sherman. Seattle, he could play some man. But that was but that, that was, was a the few, younger Richard that was Sherman a few years, years ago. Well, and, and the thing about the Niners too is that's just a great defense they have over there. It is. Well, I mean, their defensive line is hands down, I think, the best in the league. Like their front seven probably is the the best against the ball. Yeah, and then you you had Fred Warner and those linebackers into that, and I mean. They have a really good defense. Well, that's not what I'm saying. Like, yeah, no, they I have a great think... defense. It, it's the, 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 the thing that's going to be interesting for me to see, I think we brought this up a little bit last week, is 
what the Chiefs do on their defense mm-hmm. to stop the running game mm-hmm. that the the Niners have because Jimmy Garoppolo also can throw it. On. I mean, yeah. that's a guy that's going to make that's, that's is the it Chiefs. Strong, is, it, the, is that his name? Yeah, Moster. Moster is yeah. one of the guys back there. But the, the Chiefs' strong point on defense is their secondary. Yeah. So, San Fran knows what they, they need to do is run the ball. Well, they're not going to be able to stop them uh, in the pass and the run. They're going to have to pick one of those two things. It's just so difficult to imagine uh, – Trying to keep up with KC, I got to think if if you're or if, if you're the Niners, you're probably going to need to score forty or more. Yeah, in you, this you, game. you're going to have to put up some points. I mean, you know, Tennessee found that out last week. You can jump out to a seventeen-seven lead, and it can be gone within five minutes. Man, I just I I just really believe that this is Patrick Mahomes' year. And it might be, like, you know, I, the, his his ascension to you know, the, year, the way you know, he has played league, thus far in the playoffs is absolutely yeah. insane. And he might be that next generation star, like after this, after next Sunday. But you know, it's still we got to wait and see. And what broke he the does. Madden curse too. Was on the cover of Madden. Broke the Madden curse and Had didn't a, suffer a horrific yeah. injury uh, or a down season. So we're all on the Chiefs, and then you know, I just want to bring this up real quick again. Something we talked a little bit about. Uh, last week on the podcast, and that was your boy showing in the uh, in the Pro Bowl Pro Bowl Skills Challenge, getting beat in the passing competition. Look at the bad look by for Lamar. two receivers. Mm. I, mm. What was that? Maybe just uh, mm, Lamar was just not feeling. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just wanted to hear your take on all. I feel this. like it's it's the friggin' Pro Bowl. So I mean, nobody's gonna could, take it. But it's, it's, it's skills, skills challenge. It's skill challenge is a skill challenge though. He couldn't hit. He didn't have the side any points. Of a barn. I mean, he was throwing check down. <laughs> I don't even know what the AFC is doing, <laughs> kicking this dude to be in that. Like, they had so many better pocket passing quarterbacks. Well, they, they all did it. They, all the they quarterbacks all, did all it. Even a couple of receivers did, did it. And, and, I didn't and, watch it. That was that was pitiful. And we're probably he did win on. offensive player of the game. And he's probably going to be MVP. Yeah, he's probably going to be MVP. He's probably all that matters is game time. I don't care about a skills challenge. But he, he still a, ain't going to beat anybody in the playoffs yet. Here's the thing: is if he would have gotten beat by other quarterbacks, fine. You best believe, Devontae though, when he does, Randy, Adams. I'm coming at you hard, bro. And who was the other one? When he wins uh, a game. Who was the other one? Devontae Adams and uh, – Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, Devontae Adams, Jarvis Landry, both more accurate throwing football than Lamar Jackson. But he's going to probably be the MVP, and um, who, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But I think the Bengals are probably still going to be well, – wait and see. There's going to be something up. Something's up with Lamar Jackson. You just wait. See? I've been hearing rumors y'all might trade away the first pick. That's not gonna happen. Well, I mean, well, we'll see. I mean, there's there's some there's some interesting trade that offers out. Well, there, now there's there's some certain scenarios if that the Dolphins, I, if I'm the Bengals, I'd probably be okay with trading away the first pick. If, I if the get. Dolphins throw everything at them, then you know you got to take it. You get, almost have to. If somebody overwhelms. Yeah, I've, 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 yeah, uh, awful. Well, and I've also get about heard six about draft Carolina picks out. being thrown up in there. Y'all making some trades? With Carolina. I don't see that one happening. They don't have the the. The draft picks to do it, whereas yeah. Miami has a ton. Yeah, what, what if and this year and maybe one next year? So. How would you like to see Cam Newton suited up in a Bengals uniform? That's what I think. Corey says thumbs down. I agree, but if 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 Carolina comes and just offers us basically the whole draft and Cam Newton, I mean, as a Ravens fan, I would love it. I go one more year. Listen, there's some good quarterbacks coming out next year. Arguably, maybe even in my opinion, can, can they get Cockley, can they get Cockley out of retirement and be a linebacker for us? No, Keekly? I think, I think <laughs> yeah. Keekly's done. I, I, actually, I, I don't. He'll I'll, play again. I wouldn't hate that, if, play that was, if that was part of the deal. In a different league. No, I think Luke Keekley will come back. Come and back play to the again. NFL. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll sit out. He, the, I hope so, man. What I, a great player. He, oh, phenomenal. Like, uh, he's come in on, the prime of his life right From now. Cincinnati. Yeah, come he's on from back. Cincinnati. Yeah, he can be part yeah. of that package. Come on back. Yeah, Keekley is from Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Would not be mad at seeing him in a Bengals uniform. But anyway, that's, I just wanted to bring that up. Lamar I, Jackson. I, I, I mean, completely look, understand why, yeah. He's never going to be okay with us. No, ever. I enjoyed watching him this year. But I also enjoyed seeing the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, I'm always going to say he's a great player, but until he beats somebody throwing in the playoffs, I don't trust him. Yeah, well, likely the MVP. This it year. just so depends what that. kind of trajectory he's on. Right now he's trending upwards. Uh, he's gotten better, you know, consistently. John Harbaugh so going to be makes, coach of the year? He probably should I think be. he should be. Probably should be. Yeah. He was on the verge of being fired last yeah. year. That's how quick he can turn around. Well, and, yeah, but we had Joe Flacco. 
Well, and maybe next year after Michigan fires his brother, Joe he Flunker. can bring him in as a quarterback coach. <laughs> quarterback coach. Teach Lamar how to throw a little yeah. bit. <laughs> anyway, is any, am I missing anything? I think we got it all. Okay. I don't have it. I don't see anything I else. Like, listen, Randy was going to say shout out to Patrick Sparks. I just want to say that another number 22. Love, love that. There's a ton of 22s, yeah. but I couldn't pass up Elisha Justice at Louisville. Yeah, that's, shout that's out to That's my Elisha. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Covered him when he played. Yeah. And now as a coach, so. Anyway, thank you again for joining us for another episode. We will be back next week with episode 23. Be talking Super Bowl. Super duper edition. Super duper number 23. 23. Who could that possibly be? I don't know. There's no famous 23s. We're not taking the obvious choice. No, I can't think of one. I don't know one famous 23. Are you really thinking about it? Michael Jordan. (laughs) This guy. LeBron James? Uh, or like, oh, oh, this was a joke. This was yeah. a, I, I was I thinking totally Derek Anderson that. that you guys. <laughs> <Total, laughs> <Derek, yeah. laughs> That's the obvious choice when you think the number 23 yeah, is Derek Derek Anderson, Arian Foster. Arian Foster. Yeah. And Derek Anderson at UK. Yeah, those are the obvious those choices. Are, yeah. The most famous number 23 is clearly Arian Foster. I mean, I don't think anybody is going to argue with that. Anyway, thanks again for joining us for another episode. You're going to be here next week? Of course. Okay. I was just making cool. sure. I'm not sick. I don't, know. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. We we we, we got we got to wait and see with Josh. Oh, yeah. It's always a wait and see. We, we're hey afraid man, you I'm might a family get... man. If my family needs me, I, I try to help them out. So that's us. Yeah. I don't think that's us. Yeah. I do love you guys. Yeah, no, I, that's I love you too, man. That is not <laughs> weird at all. That was so. not weird at all. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week. Josh Blankenship will be here. See, he's already. We might not. He's getting ready for next week. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, happy Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs>